Hello, wonderful people. This is Mary Lou Areño, and welcome back to my Teacher's Best Friend channel. So I know you've been waiting for this episode because I promised you last week that I'm going to discuss about no objection statement, the guidelines and procedures for application. So for those uh, J-1 teachers whose J-1 a visa is about to expire, probably it's in under fourth or fifth year, this is very important for you to know because you need to apply for no objection statement in order to get a waiver to stay in the United States. So are you ready? Let's begin. So first, um, there was a resolution issued last uh, well, April 6, uh, this year, 2021, it's Resolution 02-2021. It's the revised guidelines and procedures on the waiver of the two-year home residency requirements for exchange visitors program. So if you remember, uh, there were guidelines before, and probably you know those, and um, one of these is if you are married to a U.S. citizen, you can apply for a waiver or a no objection, or if you gave birth, you can apply for a no objection and other uh, reasons. But those are the two main reasons for no objection application in the previous guidelines. But since uh, April 6, they issued a new procedures and guidelines for no objection application. And this is a uh, the Exchange Visitor Program Committee who uh, formulate this one, okay? So declaration of policies. A no objection statement may be issued in consideration of the following objectives of the Philippines and U.S. Exchange Program. So no objection statement can be issued to promote mutual understanding among Filipinos and American by means of cultural and educational qualifications. It's like uh, one of the conditions for the Filipino and American relationship. And second, provide an avenue for Filipinos and permanent residents in the Philippines to participate in educational and cultural programs and avail themselves of opportunities for cultural and educational advancement. So they are uh, doing this J-1 exchange uh, teacher program in order for most teachers or teachers that are interested to be exposed in other culture and education to apply for those uh, J-1 visa. And ensure the maximum benefits that accrue to the Philippines in its participation in the exchange visitor program by requiring participants to return to the Philippines after their cultural and educational experience. So that is the main reason why there is a two year residency requirements because the Philippine government's uh, objective is after a J-1 visa learn about the cultures and educational uh, programs in the United States, they are expected to share those knowledge in the Philippines with the other teachers, with the Philippine Department of Education and all those, okay? So that's why there is a two-year home residency. Uh, for the sake of understanding the guidelines and procedures, let's talk about some definition of terms. What are the words? Uh, or terms means. When we say exchange visitor, it refers to the foreign national who's been selected by a sponsor to participate in an exchange visitor program and who are seeking to enter or has entered in the United States temporarily on a J-1 visa. So if you are a teacher and you would like to go to the US under the J-1 visa, you are called exchange visitor and you are joining the exchange visitor program, okay? So exchange visitor program refers to the international program administered by the U.S. to implement the mutual education and cultural exchange. So this is not just for the Philippine government. 
they also offer J1 to other countries. This, the purpose of this is the US would like to have a mutual relationship or understanding by accepting teachers from other countries to immerse themselves with the culture and education in the United States so that in return, they can go back and help their home country. Okay, so that is the exchange visitor program. And uh, they also mentioned about exchange visitor skills list. So if we are going to find out and research about the skills list, these are the jobs uh, designated by the US Secretary of State on April uh, 1972 as amended and those countries which clearly require the services of persons engaged in one or more of such fields. So any alien who is a national resident of one of those countries and obtain an exchange visitor, became a participant in the visitor involving designated field of specialized knowledge. So sometimes when you go for a visa interview, they will stamp your passport with subject to 212E rule. It means you need to go back and uh, or apply for no objection. But there are those teachers uh, they're lucky enough that in their passport, they don't have those subject uh, or two year home country requirement under 212 E rule, which is the two year home residency. And they talk about the skills list. Before um, the math teachers, the special ed teachers, these are subject to 212 E because they're, they are specialized in certain fields. Uh, even science, uh, like physics teachers, chemistry teachers, those are considered skills list or special skills under the special skills list. But if a teacher is under the general elementary program, they're not supposed to be under the skills list. But there are also elementary teachers that are stamped with 212E. So it means it's still depending on the discretion of the person, you know, giving the visa at the embassy. Maybe they do not really refer to the skills list. They just feel like, okay, they have probably a random selection who gets the 212E or who does not. But in general, if you are subject to 212E rule, it means uh, your, your skills or you are specialized and it, it has, uh, it is in the skills list that are subject to 212 E rules, okay? And uh, no objection statement refers to the statement issued by the Philippine government that it has no objection to the waiver of the two year home residency requirement. So for all the J1 teachers, uh, you cannot apply waiver uh, at the U.S. Department of State unless you get your no objection statement from your home country. And uh, usually it is issued by the Exchange Visitor Program Committee in the Philippines or um, in, in um, collaboration with the Foreign Affairs. So stay tuned because I'm going to explain to you the requirements for applying for the no objection statement, okay? You hang in there because there are so many important information at the end of this uh, video. And when we say sponsors, these are the agencies designated by the US Department of State in the United States that can issue a DS 2019. And the DS 2019 is the document you need in order for you to get the J-1 visa from the U.S. Embassy. And uh, usually you, you find this list of sponsors from the website of the Bridge USA. So if you're going to look back on my previous uh, blogs or video, you will see I presented J-1 visa sponsors. So go back and check the lists or the website where you can find those sponsors. Those are the agency that you needed to get a DS 
two-year home residency, as I explained, if you are stamped with 212E, subject to 212E, you need to go home after your J-1 uh, program, which it, before it was only three years. And lucky for those that are currently on J-1, there is a two-year extension. So that is uh, equivalent to five years of staying in the United States. And uh, if you are subject to 212E, you need to go home to uh, have a two-year residency. Share your skills, share what you learned to the Philippine uh, government, to the other teachers in the Philippines. But as I have mentioned, if you don't, do not want to go home, you need to file a no objection statement, okay? So, uh, so Section 212E is applicable to those participants in the program that was financed by the government. It can be the United States government or by the Philippine government. So if you are a scholar and you're coming to the U.S. is paid by the Philippine government, let's say the Department of Science and Technology, something like that, or the U.S. Uh, government, then you are automatically subject to 212E because you are sent to be trained to become specialized. So you need to go home and share that skills or knowledge. So those who are at time of the admission to the, con to the program is a national or resident of the country which has been designated as clearly requiring services of the person. Mm -hmm. uh, as I've mentioned, these are in the exchange visitors list. So it means the Philippines sent, uh, I mean, you went to the United States on a J-1 visa. You are a physics teacher. And at the time, physics teachers are highly in demand in the Philippines or highly needed. So you are subjected to one, two E rule or uh, special ed teachers that are doing uh, multiple disabilities or severe disabilities at the time they are highly needed and they are on the skills list, then you are subjected to one, two E rule. And for those uh, who came to the United States or acquired such status in order to receive graduate medical education or training. So as you know, doctors are very in demand, scientists and all those experts. So those are subject to one, two E rule because whatever they learned, it will benefit their home country. So what are the requirements for applying NOS or no objection? So the application is available at the Philippine Embassy in the U.S. or at the ebpcommittee.ph, that's uh, Exchange Visitor Program, that PH, that's their website. And first, when you apply for NOS, you need to present a copy of your DS-2019, okay? And a copy of the Certificate of Completion from Training or Sponsoring Institution. So this must be signed by your school superintendent um, or your principal that you completed your J-1 uh, visa program or exchange visitor program in the United States. So you have to present that. And then the third party barcode indicating the waiver review file number issued by the US Department of State. So this means like you already filed your application for waiver. And of course, that's not going to go through without your NOS. But once you file that, there is a paper or application that has a barcode. So you need to bring that to the EVP or send that to the EVP committee. And um, original copy of the clearance from former employer in the Philippines at the time of departure. This is very important. I mentioned in uh, my my uh, video about uh, all about J1. If you are a teacher from DepEd, you need to get a clearance from DepEd. So even if you are a private school teacher, you need a, to get a clearance from your employer. And why is it important? Because in the long run, you will apply for no objection statement application. And if you don't have that clearance, they will not grant your own NOS, okay? 
for that very important and other supporting documents needed so let's say you marry a u.s citizen you need a, a marriage certificate if you gave birth in the u.s and you would like to claim that then you need your uh, birth certificate for your u.s citizen child or any other pertinent document that you feel can support your NOS application. So it, ha it is uh, up to your discretion, whatever is important, okay? Payment. So there is a fee when you file a, an a NOS application and um, it's a $125 and you need to remit to the following uh, account name, it says Commission on Filipino Overseas, and that's the account number, it's in peso, it's a peso account. So you need to convert $125, I don't know how much, and they have the SWIFT code, and um, there is a specific bank, it's the land bank of the Philippines in uh, Intramuros, Manila. So you, you need to remit your payment, get your deposit receipt, and you need to present that to the EVP to uh, verify that you paid the application fee of $125. And another important thing that you need to know is if let's say you are submitting a document, public document like birth certificate, marriage certificate um, from the statistics office, you need an apostille. This is like a notary, but it's it's an apostille. Uh, bring it to the U.S. Embassy uh, in the United States or wherever you are, um, and then they will like uh, put an apostille verifying that those are legitimate documents or they are true copies or true uh, original copies. So they put like a red ribbon and a stamp and they call it the apostille. And then private documents and electronic generated US documents must be covered with notarized affidavit prior to apostille certification. So before you go to uh, the embassy, you, a Philippine embassy to get your apostille, you need to notarize, go to your notary public and they have to put cover on those documents to, to verify that these are uh, documents and electronically generated and they will put an affidavit that they are legitimate and then you bring them to the Philippine embassy in your place and they will put an apostille. And there's also a fee for that. So just, just be ready. Um, fees from different states, uh, embassy may differ. So you need to check the nearest Philippine embassy in your location. And if they are also private documents, may also be notarized, acknowledged, or acknowledged by the Philippine embassy or consulate that has jurisdiction over the place where the issuing authority is located. So if you are, uh, I think if you are residing in, uh, I know Las Vegas, Arizona, you and California, you go to the Philippine embassy in LA or in California. So they are covered. So you, you go there and they can notarize and put a postal. And that's the time after you did that, that's the time you can submit the documents to the EVP office in Manila. So what are the basis for the grant of NOS? So this is something to celebrate if you are granted with NOS, it means uh, the government, the Philippine government has no objection for you to stay in the United States. You can apply for a waiver and change your status. But what are the basis? So first, the EVP committee reserves the right to grant NOS to applicants whose cases may fall under the highly meritorious circumstances. What are these meritorious? Such as, but not limited to, application from researchers or professionals whose con continued stay in the U.S. will advance the Philippines' national interests. So it means if you are a scientist, 
you were sent to the U.S. on a J-1 and your continuous training in the U.S., it will, you will gain more knowledge that is beneficial to the Philippines. They will let you stay because when you come back, when you come back, you will share those specialized skills to the Philippine government. So they will let you stay. Like, like um, if, if, Philipp if the Philippines needs a more researcher on, uh, let's say, medicine for uh, eradicating COVID-19. Wow, that is really uh, something that's, uh, that's needed in our country. So they will let you stay until you're ready to share that knowledge. So you'll be given an NOS. And um, application which will include detailed research plans are to be subjected mm -hmm. to evaluation by relevant agencies such as the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Health, uh, Commission on Higher Education and other agencies. So for those teachers, J1 teachers who would like to submit a research plan to help the Philippine government or to help the Department of Education, uh, or it will benefit students, teachers, and people in the Philippines. Those research plans are subject for evaluation. So if I were you, you can consult the OST, the OH, or Commission on uh, Higher Education, ask them what do you need at this time or the program that you need at this time and you can gear your research plan or project to those needs of this agency so you are hitting it directly you're not guessing okay you you can you can do that there's no harm in asking or trying this uh asking this uh, local government agencies what do you need that i can present to help well, they're the one approving anyway or something like evaluating the research so the evp committee will determine its decision based on authentic and sufficient supporting documents from evp participants so you need to uh, go back and look at the list that i gave you and make sure those are authentic those are apostle notarized and they are all uh, original and valid no fake okay no fake news you will suffer at the end always do the right thing as far as practicable practicable the grant of nos will include an alternative arrangement between the exchange visitor program participant and the relevant evp committee member agency or agencies and those agencies are the EVP or the CFO, the Foreign Affairs, and also uh, some um, government office like DOS, CDOH, DepEd. So it, it's like when you see the basis, there is no really a clear cut. Like unlike before, it's automatically saying, oh, if you give birth in the US, you can apply for an NOS. If you marry an American citizen, you can apply for an NOS. And I think some teachers or they, they overuse that and they force to be, you know, one of those or to fall on those guidelines. That's why probably they change the guidelines. But, you know, they're not saying it's not allowed anymore, but it's up for you to present. And the main objective is there must be a benefit for the Philippine government because that is the main purpose of the J-1 or Exchange Visitor Program, to give back to your home country whatever you learn culturally or educationally. So that is the ultimate goal. So when you are applying for NOS, you need to hit those criteria so you'll be granted an NOS. So it's not spelled out, but you should be uh, researching, interviewing, and asking what are the important needs or the priorities. So you can focus your research or your project on those areas, okay? 
And what are the grounds for NAND uh, grant of NOS? Like if they will not give you, what are those grounds or reason? So first, the applicant has not attended or has not completed the training program. Let's say you were sent in the United States and after a year, you were sent home. Why? Maybe many reasons. Maybe you did not meet the standard in the school that you went to. There must be a lot of problems. So day one, teachers are supposed to be like the cream of the craft or they're expected to perform because you are representing the country. So if you did not meet those standards of your school or your employer may not recommend you for renewal of your visa or your extension. So if you did not complete your program, then you can't get your NOS. And um, violations of participants recognize rights by training institution or sponsors. So if it's, it's not only focusing on the teacher, it may be there was a report that your employer is not treating you fairly. So it means they're not following the procedures. Then uh, they, the Philippine government will not send you back because it's for your own good. You are being uh, maltreated or treated unfairly. And um, cancellation or suspension of your training, like when they did not renew your, your uh, employment there or your program. And the participant has outstanding financial and service obligation in any government agency or private institution in the Philippines. So that is the reason why you need to get a clearance from DepEd or from any private schools. Because when you have a clearance, it means you did not owe them anything. You are cleared. Because if you don't have that clearance and you have a financial obligation or any kind of obligation, maybe you just left your uh, public school without telling your principal. So you put your students hanging without you know, preparations for your replacement or substitute. So that's not fair. You need to do the right thing, get a clearance and ask your supervisors well and I believe uh, principals, they should be understanding that they will not you know, prohibit you from advancing for your professional growth and economic growth, okay? So get that clearance. And the application has not submitted a complete application requirements. So if you go back to the requirements, I mentioned one by one, make sure all of those are complete. And there is an notary, there is an apostle. And the applicant has submitted falsified documents. So they know, they can find out. So don't ever, ever submit any fake document. Make it real, okay? So I hope you learned the procedures and guidelines in applying for no objection statement. You can go back and watch again the video, read carefully and take down notes. And of course, don't forget, if you haven't done it yet, please like and subscribe to my Teacher's Best Friend channel, Mary Lou Areno. And I thank you, uh, my, my viewers, my followers who are really watching every week. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being there and for your support. And this is all to help uh, teachers grow professionally and to have an advancement in their craft. So, and to God be the glory. Thank you for now and see you on my next video. Bye.